Welcome to everyone's today's, today's meeting of Cabinet, those who are participating and those who are watching on the live stream. As always, if members have technical difficulties during the meeting, please contact the Democratic Services Officer on call who will attempt to assist you. Um, today that's Nick Hughes, his number is 577208 and it will also be at the top of the chat thread for members if you need it. For those of you who are watching via the Council's YouTube stream, please follow the instructions below the video if there are any issues with the live feed. And I apologise in advance if I have any internet problems because I've had one or two this afternoon, but hopefully we'll be able to get through this meeting without that. Um, I'd ask participants when you're not speaking, please mute your microphone to minimise background noise. And that'll help everyone else in listening to the proceedings. Microphones must only be on if the participant has been granted permission to speak. To gain my permission to speak, please very briefly indicate on the chat to the right of the screen and I'll make a note and go back to you once the person speaking is finished. Please note we will be following the usual cabinet protocols in which other members of the council usually only speak once on each item. Uh, would everyone please ensure their mobile phones are turned to silent and they're not used to make or receive phone calls while the meeting's in progress. Please also refrain from checking emails or conducting other business and ensure you're in a quiet room free from distractions for the duration of the meeting. Please note the meeting's being live streamed for members of the public. The meeting will also be recorded and subsequently broadcast on the internet. Can I ask the members of Cabinet to confirm that they are present in the meeting when I read out their name? And I'll then go on to those councillors who are participating to speak under Procedure Rule 20.1. Councillor Whitehead. Present. Councillor Alban. Yeah, here. Councillor Duckworth. Present. Councillor Yates. Present. Thank you. The following members have asked to speak under Procedure Rule 20.1. When I say your name, can you please confirm you're present in the meeting? For item four, I've got Councillor Wing. Are you with us, Councillor Wing? Not at the moment. Uh, and for item six, I've got Councillor Garner. I'm here, Chair. Thank you. Are there any other councillors that we wish to speak under 20.1? Councillor Ashby. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to speak under item four, please. Item four. Thank you very much. OK, made a note of that. Thank you. Uh, there are no apologies for absence because Kevin, it's all here. Does anyone have an interest to declare in the items of business on the agenda this evening? I'm not hearing any, so I think we can safely assume that there isn't there aren't any interest to declare. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, to improve the summary of recommendations and decisions of the cabinet meeting held on the 28th of January. Um, I'll propose the minutes. Do I have a seconder, please? Happy to second. Seconded by Councillor Yates. And if I hear any objection, I'll take these as approved. So they're approved. Thank you. And we move on to item four, which is Coastal and Beach Public Spaces Protection Order. And that's Councillor Alban. Right, thank you, Chair. Um, creating a new uh, public space protection order, uh, which I will refer to as a PSPO, um, will help our coastline by providing us with the power to deal with antisocial behaviour on our beaches. We are also introducing uh, one code of conduct that replaces all the previous beach bylaws to complement this. The implementation of the new PSPO will help create a safer beach environment for all to enjoy through deterring and reducing crime and antisocial behaviour and other undesirable activities which our local communities and visitors are impacted by currently. The PSPO focus is on education and changing behaviour, then enforcement where needed. We will have more enforcement presence than in recent years. Refocusing resources has enabled us to have uh, to have a dedicated coast enforcement officer recruited for the season who will cover all weekends and peak times. Other officers within the team will also be trained 
on the new rules and will have the power to enforce where necessary. Warden patrols will help with the following as well. Making the rules of our coast clear, telling people what we expect of them and challenging behaviour, being present and visible as a deterrent. We have brought in new rules and operational changes that mean tighter controls around our coast for people using personnel powered, sorry, pers personnel, personal powered watercraft stroke jet skis in an unsafe and antisocial manner. Not to mention the ability to find them using the PSPO. We have taken on board members' comments from overview and scrutiny, members' briefings, and the consultation feedback from the public and made clarifications and changes. I know members are concerned about the use of jet skis, as are members of the public. So I have asked Jasmine Vickers to show a few slides to show how these will be specifically dealt with. And I would ask you to do that now before I make any proposal, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> okay, thank you, Councillor Auburn. I'm just going to share my screen. Hopefully everyone can see this now. Okay, um, so I'm, I'm going to skip the introduction since Councillor Auburn has has covered that, and I'm going to go straight on to the jet skis and, and personal powered watercraft uh, subject. <clears throat> I just wanted to give some clarifications on this because through the consultation we have had a number of questions and queries raised about this, so this is to hopefully clarify uh, some of those. So the, the original proposal was to remove all the public launch sites and remove jet skis entirely from our water user group. Um, this left three local clubs. So that left Jet Ski World in Cliftonville, Beresford Club in Birchington and Fourness, which is also in Cliftonville, but has further restrictions on, on membership there. So you can only join Fourness Club if you have a boat membership, for example. However, membership of these clubs does come with restrictions and they're not open seven days a week. So the feedback from the consultation was that actually it is a bit unreasonable for jet skiers who behave responsibly, who have the appropriate training qualifications um, and are respectful of other beach users and, and bathers um, to not allow them anywhere to launch in our district unless they join one of those clubs. Um, and then there's no guarantee that they would be able to launch on particular days if the clubs are very busy. Um, Beresford Club also aren't taking on new members. So there's a, there's a few reasons why actually it was felt that there wouldn't be a proportionate offering for the responsible jet skiers. So in light of this and taking this on board, what we are proposing is a slight amendment, which is that to move ahead with the closure of the Margate launch site, as originally proposed, but leave the Ramsgate East Cliff launch site as it is uh, and review it again at the end of this season. And if we feel that there's, you know, lots of antisocial uh, activity in relation to jet skis there, then we could still remove that site moving forward. We will still be introducing the new rules across all uh, PwC use as follows. So all PwC users will need to have the proficiency qualification, which is a one off one day course costing around £160. So for club users, we're giving a grace period for that. So we're saying that's desirable for this year because the clubs have a, a lot more control over their members anyway. But um, that will enable them to catch up following the sort of post COVID um, shutdown and a backlog um, around those training courses. However, for anyone using the Ramsgate Eastcliff site, we're saying that they would have to have that qualification. They're not to remove silences from their machines or carry out any other modifications to the exhaust system. They must display the unique registration number on their, um, on their machine, be over the age of 17, 
same as if they were driving a car. And on launching, uh, they must make sure to stay away from the beaches and bathing waters, other coast users, our nature reserves around the coast, and they must not disturb any coastal wildlife by getting too close. So each of the clubs has its own map uh, on site, which informs members of the very site specific rules around their launching. So for jet skis, uh, PWCs, on signing up to the water user group, they are also agreeing to a set of rules and regulations uh, and any breach of those rules and regulations will mean that their membership gets terminated and there will be no refund. Uh, they would also potentially face the same financial penalty as any breach of our rules as that would incur under the PSPO if they're found to be engaging in antisocial activity. So example of breaches um, that the penalties would apply to include the copying of issued barrier keys, um, leaving barriers open for non-group members to access, launching of craft that's not permitted at a particular site. And those three things um, on the face of it maybe don't sound to be um, very serious, but actually what they do is they allow people who have not got the appropriate training or insurance to launch at our site. And it's a safety issue. Um, the use of craft in a manner that poses a risk to the safety of people or wildlife, the use of craft in a manner that has the potential to cause harassment, alarm or distress to any other beach or coast users or residents. And the main difference that we have now is that we will have the power under the PSPO to find people for irresponsible jet ski usage. And that's something that we have never had before. The water user group, um, just a few changes to this that need to be highlighted, but these are also measures that will help with control of antisocial um, jet ski use uh, and other antisocial behaviour with, with watercraft. So all the keys and padlocks are going to be replaced on the 1st of June. All water user group members will need to reapply for their membership. They will have to provide proof of insurance, qualifications and payment before a new key will be issued. The Ramsgate East Cliff site, as I've mentioned, for jet skis will have its own padlock and key. And that is a measure to um, stop powered watercraft accessing any other launch site around the district. So we have a better control over um, restricting exactly where they launch from to, to that one place where the controls uh, and safety measures are in place. And then also just an aside to this is that the Ramsgate West and Undercliff slipway will be permanently closed and blocked off. So in retaining the Ramsgate East Cliff slipway, um, as we've said, that they will have to have membership as part of the council's water user group, um, provide proof of qualification, insurance and other details. On launching here, you must only turn left, not right, making sure to stay away from the main sands, bathing waters, the harbour and the Pegwell Bay National Nature Reserve and other wildlife around the coast. And they must have a proficiency qualification. Um, going to move on. So another thing just to mention about Ramsgate main sands is that we have been in discussion with the RNLI and we are looking at having the bathing water area buoyed off uh, and that is just another additional safety measure. So clubs where jet skis will be permitted, Beresford Gap in Birchington, uh, Jet Ski World at Palm Bay Hodges Gap and Fawness Club also offer a jet ski membership but only for people with an existing boat membership. So that is just an, an overview of the um, jet skis and i um, happy to, to take any additional questions on that at the appropriate time. Thank you for that. We go back to Councillor Alban. Yes, so thank you, Jasmine. Um, and hopefully that's been, uh, th that's been of great interest to members. Um, so Chair, um, I propose Cabinet approve option 6.1 6 of the report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Alban. I'm, I'm happy to second that. Um, and I've got Councillor Wing. Uh, we, we don't worry about being late, Councillor Wing. We, uh, we noticed you'd arrive. Thank you. That, uh, do I speak now? Is that OK? Yes, please. Uh, uh, I mean, generally speaking, I think this is this is a really positive move, actually. Uh, the key to it is obviously going to be enforcement. Uh, I still have some concerns about the jet skis, but I'll get to that because there are just one or two other things I needed sort of clarification on. 
uh, we, the, 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 we're going to lose a, a worker from the foreshores team. So uh, what, what will we lose by having this additional worker? Uh, it's also going to cost us 5k from the foreshores budget. So what are we losing from that budget? I understand that budget is quite small. Can we have some clarification on point four? So we presently have some fitness groups working on our beaches. Will they have to fill in forms? And the uh, point seven actually relates to events on the beach, uh, particularly music. So if I go down to the beach with my guitar and play badly for a group of friends, am I going to be uh, issued with a hundred pound fine? Uh, so I, I, there needs to be maybe some greater clarification on what constitutes uh, an, an event on the beach. Uh, you know, a group of friends just going down and somebody playing a guitar, it doesn't constitute an event, it constitutes as reasonable beach users. Uh, that was point seven. Uh, point three three says we're going to have coastal wardens. How many coastal wardens will we have? And I'm making the assumption that we'll increase that in the in the in, in the summer months when when the beach is used even more. Uh, I'm glad to see the Ramsgate main sands is going to be heavily monitored. So I'm assuming assuming the wardens will spend quite a lot of time there. I think key on there will be uh, signage for locals to report any illegal use there. So direct communication with the wardens to pick up anybody who might attempt to cut locks off because we know that's happened. I'm glad I would I would also like to see some channel markers going out so that so that the, the jet skis have a clear vision of they need to go straight out to the coast and then turn left. Um, great to hear that the boys are going in to protect the the, the sea bathers. Annex 2 actually mentions Ramsgate Harbour, and it wasn't quite clear whether jet skis can launch from there or not. If they do, how, they will have to, uh, they can go right or left or straight out across to France, I suppose. If they go left, we've got the same issue as we would have uh, uh, with the, with the, with the, uh, the East Cliff uh, launch site, where you've told them to go left. Uh, again, maybe there needs to be some sort of guidance that they need to go further out to avoid those swimming bays because they will be going across the main sands there. So that could be a, a little bit of a, a, an issue there. Uh, I think you answered, Jasmine, you answered most of my other questions. So generally speaking, I think it's really positive. You're clearly sending a message that they need to stay away from, from the, the, the our protected areas and our beaches. I do think the SAMS report, which I read, is a really, really thorough report. And that mentions wardens for enforcement, wardens for education and signage as the main areas. Interestingly enough, Nowhere in that document is mentioned jet ski. So I really do think that maybe at this time next year, we should be looking to update that SAMS report based on what comes out of the, the change to the, the coastal use and the enforcement. That, that document is a really thorough document that, that highlights the, the, the various impacts on our coast, but also the mitigations that need to be in place. But, but well done, because I think you've actually listened to uh, residents' concerns, particularly over the jet skis. So uh, I, I fully support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wing. Um, Councillor Alvin, did you want to come back on anything there? Yeah, I mean, I can I can answer some of them, uh, Councillor Wing, and um, I'll ask Jasmine to ask some of the more technical things, if you like. Signage will, will be put up. Um, we've already agreed that, um, so we want to ensure that both the public and water users know exactly um, what they can do and what they, and what they can't do. You're quite right in relation to the, to use of the beach. If you go down there with a guitar, and I'd like to see that, um, if you go down there with one and uh, want to sing along to your friends, to sing an odd sea shanty or two, um, then... Um, yeah, you wouldn't need, you won't be fined, you won't be thrown off, you won't be handcuffed and dragged along the beach. I, I can assure you of that. Um, what we would be looking at is when there is, uh, if there is um, an event of some kind, which would obviously need our, would need TDC consent and probably a license of, of some kind, or if there is any business activity taking taking place on the beach, that, that would also um, require um, a, a license from us and, and also to gain our authority and there would be a charge and why would we not do that? Um, Jasmine, if you've got the other bits yeah. of that, you can answer. Thank you. 
Yeah, happy to, to answer the rest of those. Um, so the officer, um, I won't bore everyone with the details, but the, the funding for the officer, it's not a loss from the foreshore team. It's as a result of people um, restricting their hours down to part time, people have changed their working patterns, has created some savings within the enforcement team, and that's enabled us to create the seasonal post. Um, and that there, there is an opportunity to potentially make it um, all year round, uh, but we want to sort of uh, see how this works over the summer period and pilot it as, as a seasonal officer for now. Um, and then we can amend it at the end of the summer and, and do other things with it potentially. Um, the five thousand pounds for for signage which is which is in the report um that has come from the foreshore's budget there were some some small savings made from across various different pots um in the last financial year as a result of the the pandemic and, and things perhaps not being um delivered or sort of some small savings being made but that's enabled us to pay for the signage um for the pspo the fitness groups, I think, as Councillor Auburn has said, and, and the music and the events, the spirit of the public spaces protection order is that um, is very heavily around education and informing and giving people the chance to change their behaviour, challenging the antisocial behaviour. We wouldn't stop somebody playing the guitar who actually, you know, wasn't really causing any any major incident on the beach. Um, a lot of it is down to perception uh, and, and other residents and beach users perception. So if they felt that that person was creating a nuisance or was har harassing them or causing them alar alarm in any way um, through the music, then arguably there's a potential to, to use the PSPO but as enforcement officers we would be looking at that being proportionate so um, it, it's all in relation to that um, there has to be an element of antisocial behaviour to most of the things that are in it. Um, I think the Sam's report that's a very good point I think it probably will need a review and there's a lot going on around Pegwell Bay at the moment so there's, there's definitely some things to be looked at um, and, and, and lots of elements that need to be considered in that moving forward. Um, Ramsgate Harbour, we haven't mentioned it, we haven't highlighted it because we're not really promoting the use of, of, of launching of jet skis from there at the moment. Jet skis have always been able to launch from there technically. Um, Mike may, um, I'm not sure if Mike, Mike comes on the meeting tonight, but I know there are plans moving forward potentially for, for jet skis in, in the harbour, but um, it is something that people can do. Um, I think we just need to be clear about, again, the, the very specifics of the launching at that site for people that are launching there, but it's very much controlled through the harbour office so that they would they would go in there and pay their day rate and get, be given the instructions at the point of, of going to launch. Um, in terms of the coastal wardens, we have bid for some some external money to, to fund this. Um, our intention is to have four of them continuing throughout the summer period, but um, they would be, I think, as you picked up, not an enforcement officer, so not um, having delegated power to issue tickets, but they would be focusing on the education, the information, the challenging of behaviours, so they would be performing that function. We've also bid for some money to double the number of those, which I'm hoping that we'll be successful in, um, and then therefore we would have plenty of them to be able to spread out around the district to do those really proactive patrols. And then within the existing enforcement team, we're um, giving the officers that already exist the training uh, and the seasonal focus to be able to go out and, and, and deal with uh, coastal related issues uh, throughout the summer as well. I think that was all the questions. Thank you. Um, Councillor Ashby. Thank you, Leader. Um, yes, uh, this is a really welcome document and congratulations to um, all the hard work and to the officers that have put this together. Um, it's something that um, I think has been sorely missed um, in the years that I've certainly been uh, active on the beaches and the water of being a, a past water user. Um, I just, there's a couple of questions. Um, we talk about signage, but there, there was the old signs that used to de denote the ski lanes and the launching sites and the way that you used to have to ski round, et cetera, et cetera. And certainly in Beresford, and I'm not sure, um, in, uh, sorry, Barnes's, the Barnes's car park site, there used to be a big sign that used to tell everybody how they could launch, where they, and which way around they used to go. I know in 2019, the sign didn't appear. Um, and it was, I don't know if it was lost or whatever, but it's, it's quite a large sign, which contains a lot of information. And, um, 
they they are really useful signs. And I think the one in Beresford was missing as well. So obviously last year it wasn't necessarily an issue. Um, so hopefully they can be dug out and, and put back up again. The posts are still there. Um, the question on the fines, can the, the £100 fine that is mentioned, the collection of the fines, I mean, can those fines be used? I'm not sure where they go into, the decrim pot or what pot they go into, but are those fines, can they be used for additional recruitment of additional enforcement officers? Um, also, the... Um, the earlier draft that, that we were looking at um, on it, the, the, the item is on, on the parking of camper vans. It's a highly contentious issue on this part, part of the world. And I know right along our coast where a lot of people bring camper vans down, they camp out overnight. Um, the, the original draft that I had did include overnight parking um, restrictions on overnight parking, um, but I don't, I'm not able to pick that up. I don't know if it's in a fuller document. But the main question that I need to ask is, um, does the does this restrict the parking of camper vans and caravans on actual seafront roadsides? Because it doesn't make it very clear whether or not that is included. I, I get where it's in our car parks, but this is a massive issue and um, this does cause a lot of fraction between um, residents and uh, uh, visitors and they do tend to spread out right across some of the greens and um, there's a lot of parties that go on late at night and a lot of people that stay in them overnight um, and it causes distress to a lot of re elderly residents that may live on their own um, so you know, is is this included in the restriction? Because we were led to believe that this was the case. So just some clarification on that. Um, the other section of um, driving on the promenade, um, always around the time when the beach huts are opening up, we the barriers get left open and we get new. We get a lot of um, beach hut owners that come down, drive along the prom to deliver their their um their stuff into their beach hut um is that still going to be a flexible facility um, or is it going to be really restricted because it's always actually dragged on for people tend to think that they they've got this facility for for about a month into the into the season and um there's quite a lot of traffic um if people br all bring their cars down and deliver people down there um so is uh, it are they going to be prohibited from actually delivering their stuff to their beach huts on this new order? And the last thing, uh, are we going to have a central number for contacting or reporting? Um, a lot of people, a lot of this enforcement uh, or policing of this will be done by the people themselves. So I think we need to take advantage of that. Um, certainly, Everybody loves to have a moan, I know, but, uh, you know, we the eyes and ears can be from the actual local residents that can actually help us out with this, with, with a lot of this resource. So are we going to have a central point to contact a phone number or not all people have got uh, an iPhone on and where they can email, but certainly a number where they could at least log a call uh, and then that could be transferred through to the um, to the patrols. Um, that's a, sorry, that's a, that's a bit of a rambled lot of questions, but uh, hopefully you caught all those, Jasmine. So, or Steve, I don't know who's open answering. Thank right. you. Thank, thank you, Councillor Ashby. I'll, I'll, I'll bring Councillor Alvin back in, although I suspect he's going to hand off some of the answers. But uh, Councillor Alvin. Uh, well, I, I think what I can what I can definitely say, uh, Councillor Ash, Ashby, is that um, yes, we are looking for uh, to get in a number that will be able for the public to phone. Uh, it makes absolute sense, um, and we should put that on our on our signage. I think that's uh, that's that's important. Um, as for the um, as for the camper vans, etc. I mean, you and I have had many a discussion about about this at various places. Uh, certainly, this PSPO will count on any um, tents erected on our land. We can't take uh, serve the PSPO on the highway. We would have to uh, we would have to get a, a traffic regulation order, as we have done in, in various places. Um, uh, but I I do take your comments on that because I I just happened to go along Palm Bay yesterday, 
and saw uh, several caravans there. And I know they've obviously been there a while. So they're using our parking areas for putting their own personal property on and not just park parking a vehicle. So I think that is something that, that we should look at in relation to a traffic regulation order with Kent County Council. And let's be fair, we have to go through Kent County Council with that. Um, the Barnes car park signage, uh, whether we've still got them or not, I don't know. Uh, Jasmine may be able to answer that, but it it's a good point and it is something that may, maybe we should include on our signage if if we haven't got these uh, these uh, these old ones um driving on uh, you know driving on the prom for people to put their um their, their gear for their for their beach out so i think if it you know if it was a one off thing I, I don't expect that we would want to take any action however uh, but as you said people going down on a month i don't think we would want that because there, there is an issue with it. I mean, if you've got several cars going down there at some time and the people are walking along there, that is an absolute safety issue. So um, Jasmine may well have something to, to uh, say in relation to that. So Jasmine, do you want to answer any, anything further? Yes, yeah, I, I can come in and answer um, some more info on, on those questions. The Barnes car park sign and the Beresford signs, some of our coastal signs are taken in over the winter to protect them, otherwise they just don't survive the elements. So I'll check with um, with Barry, who, who does all our, our signage. He's in the process of putting some of it out at the moment. So it might be that it's in his store and it's and it's going to get put back out again. But I will check up in case that was one that, that went missing for any reason. Um, the fines income, we are interested in uh, the fines income, but we're also interested in generating income through um, some educational training courses in relation to uh, litter and environmental impact. And, and, and we're looking into some of those schemes at the moment because we do have the ability to offer uh, training courses as an AQA accredited training provider now. And that is a potential source of income that we could use to fund more um support over the summer season we're not sure obviously on the, the amount of fines that we're going to be issuing out this year and it might be that the majority of people comply with what we're asking through the pspo before we get to the point of issuing a fine which is the ideal scenario to be perfectly honest um however yeah so we, we we can't um we haven't got an income target on the fines or anything like that because we really need to see how it how it pans out this first season um so that's that's something that we can revisit um, the restrictions on the overnight parking, as Councillor Auburn has said, um, uh, we would need a TRO for that on the on the on street, um, which is something that we're looking at at the moment for the particular areas that we know are a problem. And I know in in Westgate there's particular issues, and and um, in Ramsgate, you know, various locations around the district. Um, we can take action through the PSPO if they are using the green space because they often park next to a green space and then put an awning up or pitch tents, have barbecues, have bonfires, have parties or whatever. We can take action over all of those things. Um, the issue really with using the PSPO for the on-street parking element is the we could give them the fixed penalty notice for the activity, but we wouldn't be able to move them on. Um, so the, the parking legislation is really the most effective way of doing that. And that is something that we want to push forward with um, in the coming, in the next couple of months to try and get some of those pushed through. One of the problems we have in Thanet is we don't have an overnight car park for the camper vans. So there is a discussion potentially to be had around, we're gonna restrict the overnight parking at all of these locations and we identify which ones they are around the coast, but we offer people a particular car park for overnight parking. So that that's something we we have to you know maybe look at. Um, Driving on the proms, leaving the barriers open it has been a big problem in recent years because it allows anyone then to come on and then access our slipways and, and, and all sorts of issues. And it's a health and safety problem um, having that as like a shared space with cars and bikes and pedestrians and dogs and, and all sorts of things going on. So, um, yeah, it is covered in the PSPO. Uh, we are restricting it. The Beach Hut owners and, and the Beach Hut um, customers will be given certain times by your leisure who manage all of their all of that relationship to go down and to and to access the beach huts with all of their equipment so they will get the opportunities to do it at set times um 
And as Councillor Alban said, we're not going to be fining individual people. You know, we are going to ask them not to do it and, and, and to stop doing it if we catch them in the act. But if it's a persistent problem in a location, we, we, we you know, we might have to have somebody down there monitoring it. Um, central number for contacting. Um, we're going to have two single points of contact, two numbers that can be called um, directly. And the beaches at thanet.gov.uk will be the email address for all email inquiries. And we will get that put on the signs as well. well I think that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, other members of cabinet, has anybody got any comments or questions they wish to raise? I'm not seeing any. So um, the um, recommendation has been moved and seconded. Is that agreed, members? And if I hear any objection, I'll take that as agreed. That's agreed. Thank you. So we move on to item five, which is the dog public spaces protection order amendments, Councillor Alvin. Here we go again. Um, TDC extended the existing uh, PSPO until the 25th of October 2023, which covers dog fouling, dog exclusion and dog control. The existing order has helped protect the diversity of the bird population and wildlife of Pegwall Bay, Upper Chalk, Short mud flats and salt marshes the order has protected the quality of the public health and welfare through enforcement which has seen sorry which has been helping promote cleaner beaches parks churchyards and fenced play areas the amended pspo will mostly be the same as that which has been in force for the last three years, but with the addition of amendments of two amendments to help uh, protect coastal wildlife. Uh, these changes were proposed for consultation as a request for consideration from the public and other stakeholders. The recommendation is that the current PSPO is altered to support minor amendments until 2023, um, both refer to coastal wildlife and are, one, Pegwall Bay, amend to cover Upper Chalk uh, short to protect endangered wildlife and feedback has been positive on this amendment. Two, activities that could be banned to protect wildlife, uh, human and dogs uh, interfering with trapping or attempting to trap or snare or disturb any wildlife on council owned land. And again, feedback has been positive. The third proposed amendment regarding Westbrook Bay, uh, the public responded in the majority uh, for no change and I'm not proposing any change to take place on Westbrook Beach. Um, I propose Cabinet Agree Option 1 as defined in 3.1 of the report. Thank you Councillor Alban, I'll second that. Um, any discussion members? No, so unless I hear any objection I'll take that as approved. That's agreed, thank you. And we move on to item six, which is the new open spaces grass cutting regime for pollinators. And that's Councillor Alvin as well. Aren't you all lucky this evening? Um, in my dulcet tones. Um, the pollinators such as bees, butterflies and moths are vital to our environment, uh, ecology and our food. However, as we all know, they are in serious decline. The most, significant, uh, sign the most significant cause of pollinator decline and one that TDC Open Spaces can immediately address is the loss and degradation of their habitats. The Climate Change Officer and Open Spaces team have taken advice from the Bumblebee Trust and Plant Life UK on how to address this problem. 
Following this advice, we are proposing to reduce grass cutting on selected areas of large open spaces, such as along the coast to create native wildflower meadows. No cutting between April and September. We will, be, we will cut a walkway through the middle of these areas to allow easy access and the surrounding areas will also be cut to define the area. Signage will uh, also be displayed and we will also be taking part in the No Mow May in our parks to help smaller flowers grow to enable our pollinators to, to feed. The specific areas are listed within the report and shown in maps which are added as appendices. Members are fully aware of the climate emergency motion approved by Council in 2019. And this proposed action goes hand in hand with that motion. Uh, I therefore propose Cabinet approve the report as in the recommendations, which are to change the cutting regime with monitoring of public perception and feedback, and two, delegate authority to the Director of Operations in consultation with the Cabinet Member for Operational Services to approve minor amendments to the policy. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Alban. I'll second that. And we've got Councillor Garner to speak on this item. Thank you. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to welcome this new open spaces grass cutting regime and would like to thank um, the climate change officer and all those involved in putting, putting it together. As someone who volunteered as part of the Buzz for the Coast project, I recognise the importance of improving the habitat for pollinators and other wildlife across Thanet and believe this is a really good step forward. To ensure its success this summer and over years to come, it will be important for us to engage with the wider community, particularly in the areas where changes will be noticeable, to make sure that the positive benefits to the wider environment of the new regime are understood. I know the communications team have put together a plan to publicise this over the coming weeks and months, which will, I'm sure, extol the positive benefits to the what of the wider environment of the new regime and encourage as many of those residents as possible fortunate to have their own garden to think about how they could change their own grass cutting routines. Would it be possible just to hear a little bit more about this communication plan and also maybe consider as lockdown restrictions start to ease ways in which we can bring community groups together to get involved in planting projects in parks around the district, especially for those residents without gardens. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Garner. Councillor Alban? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I, I support your view, Councillor Garner. Um, I, I, I have already uh, spoken with our parks uh, manager uh, actually, last year before lockdown, when we were um, we went around various parks, and one of the things that I was would like to actually do, as you quite rightly say, is to get communities involved, um, trying to get some community groups going in relation to our parks, and um, but also to get schools involved to see whether we can get uh, children involved, which is very very important. Um, and so, yeah, I take your view. Um, I, I'm sure um, our comms team will, will be more than happy to uh, brief you uh, once that's gone out and, and to keep me informed of that, Count, Councillor Garner. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Alban. Um, members, any comments on this? I mean, I'd just like to, to give it my support. I think it's um, I think it's a very positive initiative and I, I do I do agree that communicating why we're doing what we're doing to the public will be key to its success. Um, but I think there'll be a lot of support for it in the community. Um, right, members, so unless I hear any objection, I'm going to take this as approved. So that is approved. Thank you. And that concludes the business for tonight. So I declare the meeting closed. I think it's about 6.15.
Um, thanks to everyone who participated.